In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a stripe pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new template. So go to File, New, or press Ctrl N. We want to use our standard settings of 12 by 12 inch with a transparent background and select OK. So to create our stripes, we're going to come down here and create a new layer and then navigate to the Shape tool. This may be showing a rectangle depending on what you last used. If you right click, um, it'll come up with all the different types of shape tools that you can use and we want a rectangle. So just select the rectangle tool. Now if you come up here we want shape, the shape menu, not path or pixels, we want shape and we want the fill to be um, selected so you can make this any color you want. Um, when I create overlays I prefer to use black because I can easily see the shape against um, this transparent background so while you might want white stripes um, with a colored background it might be harder to see if you make the white stripes because this is white so we'll just go with black and we don't want any stroke which is the border around the stripe and because we haven't selected stroke neither of these two options apply so we don't need to worry about them so to create the stripe just come anywhere onto your canvas left click and drag with your mouse you can make them as thin or um, as fat as you want them to be for this one um, I think that size looks alright and the reason we start with a 12 by 12 template is so we can see what size the stripes are going to be um, in the end because we want the final product to be a 12 by 12 inch template. If you want to make them, um, if you want to make your template letter size paper, um, if you're using them to make a printable or something like that, um, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to make it that size after we finish creating the stripes. So I always start with a 12 by 12 inch because if you um, enlarge an image it's going to be blurry but if you reduce the image it'll still maintain the picture quality. So just left click to let your mouse go and there's our stripe. Now we want the stripe to come to the ends of the canvas so go to the move tool, press control T so you now get these little um, boxes on the edges of the shape. We want to choose the middle one left click and drag so it's off the canvas. It doesn't matter if it comes off this edge bit here um, because we don't want there to be any white space between this, the end of the stripe and the edge of the canvas so I always extend it a bit off the canvas and do the same to the other side and then press enter to apply the changes. Now I want my stripe to reach right to the edge of the canvas so I'm going to click on the shape, left click it and drag it up so it will go right to the top. Now see how it sort of snapped to the edge? If yours isn't doing that, you make sure view snap is selected and all this snap to guides grid etc and it will um, really help when you're making patterns to make sure the snap tool is selected. So now we've only got one stripe so I want to make more stripes to fill the whole template. So to do that, press Control J to make multiple copies. I'm going to make about 10. Yep, that'll do. Um, you can always come back later and add more if you want the stripes to be closer together or um, delete some if you want them to be really widely spaced apart. So now that we've got all of these, I'm going to choose the last one I created, left click and drag it down to the bottom of the canvas so it's touching the edge as well. And now that I've got this one selected, press Shift in the Layers tool and choose the first one that you made. So all of the rectangles are now highlighted. We've got the Move tool selected. We're going to come up to this top menu and choose the Distribute um, Vertical Centers button. So now we've got our, stri our stripes evenly spaced apart. So we've got stripe and then the fatness or the thickness of the um, other the stripe that you're going to put behind it technically well, the color you're going to put behind it is the same width as this one so it's all evenly spaced so that looks good. Now what I like to do is um, keep a copy of the original rectangle that I made in case I want to come back 
because um, we're now creating a template. So you can come back and you can uh, make a fat stripe, a thin stripe, or lots of different sizes. So I'm just going to create another copy of that one, and I'm just going to hide it by clicking on the eye. So there's now a square there instead, and just drag, left click to drag that down. So I can always come back and use that template again if I want to make stripes of this same size. So now if I left click on rectangle 1, hold down shift up to rectangle 9, right click merge shapes, we've now got our stripes overlay. If you double click on the text, you can rename it. So I'm just going to call this stripes overlay and just click anywhere else to apply the name change. Now we want to put a color behind the stripes. So to do that, come. I'm just going to hide this one and come to layer 1 and go to the paint bucket tool and I want to make sure that foreground is selected. So foreground color means this first color here, so in this case it's blue. So I don't mind blue, it's a pretty color, we'll make it blue. So we've now got our background color selected. Now I'm going to show the stripes again. So that's looking alright, we've got some black and blue stripes, but what if we want white stripes? So there's two ways to do this. You can double click on this square button here on the bottom right of the straight stripes overlay layer, the layer thumbnail, double click on that, and you can now change the color. You can pick any color you want and see how it looks with the blue. Um, they're a bit ugly, I'm just going to go with white. And white is 255, 255, and 255, or just type in, uh, I think it's six Fs to get that color if you don't want to fiddle around with this little circle tool. And then select OK. So that's looking quite nice. We've got some um, white and blue stripes. Mm, or the other way you can make the stripes white is to go, I'll just edit, step backward to undo that, is to create a new layer and make this layer white. So the fill, we'll choose white. Left click off the canvas a bit and drag so it highlights everything. I think we might be a bit missing up the top, so just press Control T and extend that off the canvas. And then you can right click and choose Create Clipping Mask. Clipping Mask is like one of the go-to tools in Photoshop. It means you can clip any pattern or color or image to a shape and it will only like fill those areas of the shape. Um, so it's really good if you want to make invitations and you know how you see someone they've got like an oval and then the um, kids picture is in the oval shape? That's how they do it. They drag the picture onto the canvas and then they clip the picture to an oval shape to get that effect. But I'll show you that in um, a later tutorial. So we've got our stripe pattern. Um, it's looking alright to me. If you wanted to make it reversed so that um, the edges of it were blue and this stripe was white, you can just go to the blue, press Control J, drag it up to the top, right click Create Clipping Mask. Now I don't want to see this blue background anymore and I'm just going to make this one white instead. So new layer, it's already on white left click and drag. So I've now got blue and white stripes which I think looks much better than if you have a white edge and then blue especially if you're um, printing something onto white paper and you want it to be less um, so it doesn't fit right to the edges of the page and you want to trim something down if you've got white on the edges here it's going to be really hard to see to trim it down so I always make sure that the edge color is blue or any color that you want on the top and bottom which makes it easier and just looks neater too well in my opinion anyway um, you can do whatever you want that's the beauty of what I'm teaching you you can apply these any way that you want choose any settings that you want at all whatever you like so now that we've got our stripe pattern that's looking pretty good 
I'm going to save it. So if I go File, Save As, or press Shift Control S, and now I can choose where I want to save it. So I'll just dump it in this folder that I've got. If you want to save your template pattern to come back to it later, which we do, then you're going to want to choose Photoshop file format, which is PSD. And you can call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it Stripes Pattern 1 and select Save. So now you've got a copy of this, so you can come back any time that you want to use this. If you want to use it to make a note card in blue, um, you can use it if you want to come back and instead make the stripes pink because you want to make a gift tag, you can come back and just use the template that you've already made and not have to recreate all the stripes and everything from scratch. So it really increases your efficiency and you can find yourself making a lot of printables in a day. That's why we create these templates. Um, so if you want to make it a um, JPEG or an image, if um, you're using PowerPoint and you want to make it teacher printable, um, or you're using Word, or Canva or anything else like that, just go File, Save As, and we're now going to change the file format to a JPEG. Um, JPEG or PNG? So I use JPEG, JPEG if it's a pattern because it takes up um, the file image size is less than a PNG. So you would just go JPEG, call it whatever you want, and hit Save. I always choose quality 12, which is the maximum, which means it's going to be a really high quality file. If you choose one, it's going to be a really shoddy file. And if I was buying that pattern off you, I wouldn't be very happy with the quality because it's going to be not very nice. The edges won't be crisp. It might be a bit blurred. So always choose the maximum quality option that you have um, available and always choose this baseline standard. Um, and select OK. So it's just saving. Now, when you would use PNG, so I would use PNG if I wanted to make this stripe overlay if I was going to sell the overlay to someone. So I'm just going to hide these layers so we only see these stripes and so we've got a transparent background. So that means when someone uses this, if you're in um, Word for example and you've got a white background you'll only see these black stripes or if you're making something in Photoshop um, again it'll give you this transparent background. So we'll go File, Save As, because if you save it as a JPEG it'll make this white and you might not want the background white, you might want it a different color or be able to choose the color. So that's why we save this as a PNG and I'll just call this Stripe Pattern Overlay and select Save and just choose small, slow, and interlace none. Select OK. Alright, so now say I want to make something with my pattern. I'm going to go File New, 12 by 12 inch, and select OK. Then I'm going to navigate to where I have this saved, which is in here. And so this is my PNG file, PNG file format, or my JPEG file format. So I'm going to choose my PNG one. If I left click and drag it onto the canvas, and when you see these lines come up on the edge, that means it's going to come on the canvas, so just let it go to add it. So there's our stripe pattern, and just press enter to apply it to the canvas. And now you can start doing um, whatever you want with it. You can make um, a whole bunch of different colors and make a digital paper set or you can add it to um, an 8.5 by 11 inch and make um, a printable or a note card if you wanted it like a 6.4 or any size that you want um, you can now create it so let's say we want um, an 8.5 by 11 inch we're going to go image canvas size and make it inches. Uh, it's currently 12 by 12. So letter size or US um, page size is 8.5 by 11 inches high. And I'm just going to choose OK and click proceed. So it's now letter size. But I don't like that that's small and 
that's large and it's uneven. So I can press Control T and left uh, press Shift to maintain its proportions so you don't have it all distorted and squish looking and left click and drag it in until it reaches the edge of the canvas on either side that looks alright, press enter and just to make sure it's aligned I'm going to go to the marquee tool left click and drag to highlight everything, go back to the move tool click center and the center align button so that's good, we haven't got any white space, press Control T to zoom in there's no white space between the stripe and the edge of the canvas, which is what we want. So that's good. Um, so now you can add your background colors, or you can add shapes over the top to make your printable and make this a background. So for example, press the new layer, rectangle. I might want white. Left click and drag. So there's your... Um, writing space, let's quickly make a um, printable notepad so another background colour, I might want to use blue this time using the shape tool, left click and drag let's move that onto the back I want the stripes to be blue and white so I'm going to create another layer of this white one move it to the back and I'm going to clip this light blue to the stripe overlay That's the note layer, and this is the background layer. Left click and drag to move it, and make it extend off the canvas. So that's looking alright, let's add a border though, so we can see the distinct edge between these white bits. So I'm going to go to the shape tool, select stroke, and let's make it... Mm, what colour have we got? Uh, pink will do. Blue and pink always looks good. Um, and just like the move tool, marquee, center align it vertically and horizontally, press control D. So we've now got some note paper. So that's just an example of what you can do with one of these overlays. You can really make pretty much anything that you want, especially with a stripe pattern. Um, it's a really good pattern that will work with pretty much anything. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and that's it.